Hello, everyone, and welcome to How to Women's French Days Masterclass Series by The She Shoots. This is episode three, Ladies' Range Day, Marketing and Promotion. To quickly recap, we have organized the series into six episodes where we will cover everything you need to know about hosting a Women's Range Day. Episode one, Ladies' Range Day, Getting Started. Episode two, Location and Planning. If you missed it, you can go back and watch it, then come back to episode three. No rush, we will be waiting for you. Episode three, marketing and promotion. Episode four, organizing the logistics. Episode five, event day. And episode six, follow up. Before we get started, let me introduce ourselves and thank our sponsors. I am Regina Ruiz Ordonez, director of the CUSF Women's Division, Deneen Tomlin and Casey Gavinchuk, founders of Lady Guns, and Kelly Melansom, director and senior instructor of Maple Seed Project. Thank you to our sponsors, Cabela's Canada Outdoor Fund, positively shaping the future of the outdoors. Every cent donated by rounding up a checkout goes toward helping Canadian organizations just like ours. Savage Arms, home to the Steven single shot rifles and shotguns. Breda, family owned and operated since 1526. And Vortex, the best in optics. On today's episode, episode three, Ladies Range Day Marketing and Promotion, we will be covering the following topics. As sponsors, marketing, social media, inclusive and inviting, background, so money collection, refund policy and platform, and pricing. Thank you so much, Rahina, and welcome back if you've been watching us. So we're going to talk about marketing and promotion, and I don't know if everybody that follows She Shoots knows that Casey does all the heavy lifting for that. So Kelly and I are going to share with you some of the things we get involved in, and we have the privilege of Casey sharing with you today all of the things that she does in the background to make event days and other things very successful. So I am going to lead off with sponsorship. So a range day needs some help. And if we can get sponsors involved, uh, everybody's winning for sure. And so let's talk about what kind of sponsors we can have. The range itself can be your sponsor, uh, retailers in the community that you're in, but also in the shooting community, in the outdoors community, can be your sponsors. Members of the range you're at or member companies that support the range. And then we've got some great organizations. We've mentioned Cabela's that supports this program. But in Canada, we have the CCFR Women's Program, and they specifically support and sponsor women's events. So those are the kind of sponsors we can go after. What are the kind of things that we can get uh, for our range day? So we can look at getting actual cash. Money helps move things along. We can get products like ammunition, prizes, food, donation of the use of firearms for the day. And the range itself could be a sponsorship item. Also the targets. We talked in another episode about paper or steel. Those kind of things can be part of a sponsorship package. So how do we get sponsors? We build a nice sponsor package. It should include the benefits to your sponsor. Why should they get involved? The details for the event and who is getting involved in organizing the event and benefiting from being at the event, the types of donations we're going to be asking for so that that potential sponsor knows that they have options, maybe a little bit of cash and a little bit of swag, or maybe some other combination. We also need to let those sponsors know they can participate and we'd love them to participate in the event. And we'd like the sponsors to utilize their social media and media platforms to help promote our event or your event, and also the other uh, activities that are going on. So that should cover sponsors. Let's get on to the next topic. It's over to you, Casey. Yes, so um, marketing is very important because it's important to get the word out when you're having an event like this. So um, what are you going to use to help you um, communicate with everybody that you're having a range day? Uh, this could be anything from Instagram, Facebook, other social media program uh, uh, platforms. Um, you could also make pl- flyers that you can put up in um, gun, sh- gun shops or um, your local Canadian Tire if they will uh, allow you to. Um, this will determine the format for um, your images and your uh, marketing materials. 
So there's several options for creating these marketing materials. Um, you can go with the regular old Microsoft programs like Word or PowerPoint. Um, almost everybody has them. They're pretty easy to use, but they're not super flashy. So they're probably better for um, print materials like mm -hmm. flyers. Um, the other options you have is something like Picasa or Canva, both of which have free versions. I believe they all have, or these two have templates that you can use um, to kind of get you started. Um, I know Canva has a paid, paid version and Canva will also uh, supply um, stock images. Stock images, thank you. <laughs> Um, the other thing you can use is Adobe products, but those right. are usually pretty cost prohibitive. So unless you're already using them, I wouldn't recommend. Um, make sure that you know your audience. So you want to create an inclusive, um, friendly image. And, you know, you can use it for, for pic pictures that, that look welcoming and um, colors that, you know, might attract more people. If you're doing a family event, you can use more cartoony um, images. Uh, just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, and make use of your community to help spread the word. So you, to promote your events, like your, spon your, your sponsors can definitely help with that. Volunteers, um, the range you're using, businesses around the community, um, and make sure that you shout out or include your sponsors as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your imaging and your your marketing include those sponsors, Absolutely. Uh, logos as well, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you want? And, go ahead. Oh, and sometimes <laughs> you want to do the event more than once, and some events become annual events. So something you can reuse is mm -hmm. super helpful. You don't have to reinvent Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we talk a little bit about the pricing or? I think we got registration first. Oh, why don't we talk <laughs> yeah. about registration? Okay. <laughs> Then so we can do that about first, money. and then pricing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when you when you've set up or determined that you want to have this event, you're going to have to set up some way to collect the money and to register. So, um, if it's your first time, you may want to just uh, you know collect it organically or manually. Uh, use a Excel spreadsheet and collect cash at the event or um, through e-transfer. Um, there's also other options for you like Eventbrite. Uh, just be aware that there are fees that are involved with uh, those kinds of platforms. So be sure that you research them before you decide to go in that direction. Um, the other thing that you want to think about is having a refund policy. So have something set up, uh, pardon me, set out when you're setting up. So some examples of that might be no refunds, but you can transfer the tickets to a friend if you can't make it. Mm -hmm. Or um, you can have a full refund up to five days before the event. So that's kind of an example of that. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. the uh, refund policy you're going to work into uh, pricing and why that's important. Hey, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, it is. Um, so now let's talk about pricing, okay? Let's talk about yeah. it from this perspective of I know everybody likes free stuff. I love free stuff, but I do know what's going to be happening. And it's based on our, our, our experiences. If, uh, if somebody offers something for free, it means that people don't always attend. So what we would like to see or what we recommend, sorry, is actually um, set a price for the attendees, something that's cost inclusive, but it's not prohibitive. Uh, so what it means is basically that price is going to allow you to help offset some of the costs of the event. For example, paying off that range uh, fee or maybe uh, ammo for the day or, or food along with the sponsors um, donations. And maybe the event will um, be something that will actually raise money as opposed to um, be a deficit. When we're talking about raising money, this is also a, a good thing to our recommendation to think about is when you're setting the price, 
uh, include uh, maybe a local uh, women's um, cause or location. So for example, events that I've done, we've also linked in breast cancer awareness. So the price itself, the participants would pay uh, the price for the day of the event. And as I said, it'd cover ammo and it'd cover some of the food, but a uh, portion of their um, their portion of their fee would actually go to uh, breast cancer awareness. So this is a fantastic idea. It goes into the marketing perspective as well. You can actually add that into your posters and your social media. Um, make sure that when you're talking about those those local causes that you get buy-in from them as well, they can help with uh, advertising, but we want to make sure that they're willing to to accept the donation as well. And also when you're talking to your sponsors, yes. tell them that you're going to be donating a portion of the proceeds to uh, whatever cause it is. Um, and you'll get those buy-ins from those people. So when we were talking about refunds as well. It's really, really important for you to um, have that established refund policy. So if you're using Eventbrite, put it in there, but also on any of the um, documentation you have or social media, have that on there too, because we always know that there is the range fee. There is the food that you're going to be buying. So there is a cost to everything. Um, and if people are saying that they need that refund, well, we also have to have enough money to put on the event. So yeah, there are transaction a, fees as well that you need to keep in mind. Absolutely right. So, keep those all in mind when you are when you're uh, talking about uh, the the price. Um, but also make sure that it make sure that the price gives you the person the value for attending the event as well. So, as I said, it's inclusive, but it's not cost prohibitive. So, if we're talking one hundred and fifty dollars and it's going to be for an hour, that might be something that people will say nope not interested. Mm -hmm. However, if it's a $50 fee and it'll cover your lunch as well as the ammo and then a portion of it is getting donated to breast action, breast cancer, then they're going to go, yeah, absolutely. I'm there. I'm in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Another idea, Cal, just, uh, just to add, if, if cost is an issue and you really want to support an organization or a cause, you can yeah. also do a food, a food drive. You can do a clothing drive. You can do something for a women's shelter. So it doesn't mm -hmm. always have to be uh, in, including money, but you still yep. can support a cause and ensure mm -hmm. that your sponsors, your volunteers and the range are all aware that you're trying to support that local cause. Yeah, that's fantastic. And when we talk about sponsorship too, some of our sponsors have uh, offered to pay the fee for um, uh, attendees who just can't afford it as well. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things to, to think about too. So if you have people that are contacting you that are saying, I'd love to come, but I just can't afford it. Um, you know what, put them in contact with the sponsor or have that already set up on, on the side. Yeah. So I think that we have everything covered. So let's go back and do a little bit of summary or recap. So we talked about the sponsors and uh, where you can go uh, to get sponsorship with that. Uh, think about local, think about your ranges, uh, think about uh, um, going to those national organizations like the CCFR Women's Group, marketing. Uh, yeah, get out there, use social media, use um you know the people the sponsors uh use the range itself uh use um, um an actual piece of paper but you also again use that uh, social media background so when we're talking about registration just to make sure you have something uh solid with a collecting of the money uh, your return policy is already determined and then make sure that the pricing the pricing is inclusive but not cost prohibitive because we want people to come out and we want them to have a great time. Good job. Absolutely. Yeah. Mute. Rahina, you have <laughs> your mute on. So we're going to ask you to turn that off so that we can hear uh, everything. You say. Thanks. Thank you. Definitely forgot to do that. So let me start again. <laughs> If you like the masterclass and would like to see more content like this from us, please leave us a like and follow us. You can watch all of our masterclass series episodes on the CSF YouTube channel and the Lady Guns YouTube channel and Facebook page. 
If you liked our message and would like to learn more about our programs, check out our websites at cusf.ca, ladyguns.ca, and maplecityrifleman.com. To support us and get some additional perks, check out our membership programs. Thank you all for joining us for our third episode of How, How to Women's Range Day Masterclass Series, Marketing and Promotion. Make sure to watch episode four, Organizing the Logistics, already available for your learning pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.